Well, good evening. I'm coming to you from our beloved Drennan Springs Chapel, and I'm getting near the end of the book of Acts. We are up to chapter 27 out of 28, so almost there. And this chapter, it's a wild one, and it's one that really has fed into my love of biblical archaeology. It's probably 15 years ago or so that Harriet bought me a book called The Lost Shipwreck of Paul, and it was about an explorer named Robert Cornuke who went on a quest to find the anchors from pretty much the shipwreck that happened in Acts 27 off the island of Malta. And there's pretty good evidence that they've been found. You're never going to have any kind of archaeological mishap that disproves the Bible. What you're going to have is always archaeological proof that the Bible is what it says it is. And this is one of those cases. The scripture I want to read to you tonight is simply a few verses, verses 39 through 44, and it wraps up what happened with this, this journey. They're going from, you know, he's been to Jerusalem. He's appeared in front of uh, different governors, in front of King Agrippa, and now Jesus has told him through a vision that he's got to go to Rome because that's where it's the, the center of the world at that point is Rome. Paul's on his way there, and as I've shared on these videos and from the pulpit, it's where Paul meets his end, and I'll be talking about that some Sunday morning uh, from the pulpit and with chapter 28. Here is Acts 27, verses 39 through 44. It reads, When it was the day, they did not recognize the land, but they observed a bay with a beach onto which they planned to run the ship if possible. And they let go the anchors and left them in the sea, meanwhile loosing the rudder ropes. And they hoisted the mainsail to the wind and made for shore. But striking a pace where two seas met, they ran the ship aground. And the prow stuck fast and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. And so it was that they all escaped safely to land. So this is uh, one more stop that Paul makes on his journey from the Holy Land to Rome. This is the island of Malta in the Mediterranean Sea, and there's evidence of his being there, and like I said, evidence of the shipwreck, the anchors that were dropped at various points throughout chapter 27 have been located, which I think is just so cool. I know that there's some of you that geek out on biblical archaeology. Well, not a whole lot of you, but there's some of you. But I sure do, and I know that what the Bible says is true. It is the perfect Word of God, it's a living word, and uh, therefore it cannot be disproven. It will always be proven. So for this, uh, with this proof of this happening and the captivating story that occurs throughout this, it, it reminds me a lot of, you know, when I was a kid, my favorite classic comic book to read was Robinson Crusoe. I read it hundreds of times and then lost it and then bought another copy of it as an adult just probably less than 10 years ago on eBay. Love those kind of stories of shipwrecks, the movie Castaway. Paul went through that. You know, they went through a shipwreck on the wild and crazy adventures of the apostles leading uh, from land to land after Jesus' ascension. And we know through church tradition and through Jewish historians and through historians that didn't even have a dog in that fight where most of the apostles ended up. I was at a funeral today. I'm wearing my FCA shirt because, uh, as a lot of you all know, one of our kids from Kenwood Station Elementary was tragically killed in an auto accident over the weekend. But the minister that was preaching at this young man's funeral was talking about the fact that all of this is true, all of this has happened, and it's this is living history that not only... 